Hi, Kevin Howard here again for another exciting and informative edition of TVC TV Tips and Tricks. Today, we're going to be focusing on the all-important topic of lighting. Specifically, we're going to take a look at the basic lighting principle called three-point lighting. After that, I'll introduce some other creative variations to this standard lighting arrangement. Let me first begin by saying that I can't stress enough the importance of lighting in composing top-notch video. Even more important than a good quality camera and lens, your lighting setup is crucial to shooting professional looking footage. It can take quite a bit of time to set up the proper lighting, but make sure you take the time because the end result is certainly worth it. Three point lighting was actually a concept that originated in theater. Single light sources created harsh shadows on the stage actors and made their faces hard to see. To correct for this, Lighting designers decided to place lights on both the left and right front sides of the stage actors. Also, in order to counter the perceived lack of depth on stage, designers placed a third light above and behind the performer. This third accent light separated the performer from the background and added visual depth to the stage. As a result, the classic three-point lighting principle was born. This basic lighting setup is still used today in both professional television and film production. Three-point lighting uses, as the name implies, three different light sources. These lights are called the key light, fill light, and backlight. The key light is the primary light source and usually the strongest light out of the three. It is normally placed on one side of the subject at a 10 to 45 degree angle from the camera's position and raised 15 to 45 degrees above horizontal. The key light is positioned so that one side of your subject is well lit, while creating some shadow on the other side. The key light can be used without adding any light filtering elements to create harsher shadows, or you can add a variety of diffusion materials that soften the light, greatly reducing contrast. Depending on the mood of your shot, Many times placing a diffusion gel, silk screen, or soft box on the light source can even out the light and create a visually pleasing composition. As you can see, by manipulating the intensity of the key light, you can produce lighter or darker shadows on your subject's face to give your talent a harsher or softer appearance, which affects the overall mood in your shot. Just be careful with your shadows to avoid unpleasing looking images. When shooting outdoors, the sun oftentimes substitutes as your key light, but if you can, try to avoid shooting under direct midday sun as it can create very harsh shadows on your subject. If you have no other option than shooting under direct midday sun, it is recommendable to use a silk screen, as seen here using TVC TV silk screen, to diffuse the intensity of the sun, or you can use a reflector to fill in the shadows. Truly the best times to shoot are either in the early morning or late afternoon hours, which are referred to as the golden hours, when the sun isn't as intense. This brings us to the second light used in a three-point lighting setup. This light is called the fill light. The function of this light is to fill in the shadows created by the key light. The fill light is usually placed on the opposite side of the camera from the key light. It is normally softer and less bright than the key. Again, to reduce the intensity of the light, you can either add diffusion material or you can simply move the position of the light further from your subject. Notice how the fill light subtly fills in the shadows created by the key light to smooth out your overall image. The third light in a three-point lighting setup is the backlight. The primary function of the backlight is to separate the talent from the background. It is many times referred to as the rim or hair light. The backlight is normally a lower intensity light used to highlight the subject's hair and shoulders, which pulls your subject out of the background, giving your shot more three-dimensionality. It should be placed as close to directly behind your talent as possible, at a high angle, without appearing in the frame. By lighting the back of your talent's head and shoulders, the resulting rim of light helps separate your subject from the background. Depending on the talent's hair color, or even if they are bald, you can apply various color gels to the backlight to create more visually pleasing images. Now, you might be wondering when I'm going to introduce a trick in this episode, since this series is called TVC TV Tips and Tricks after all. Well, not to disappoint, let's take a quick look at a trick that can enhance your three-point lighting setup even further. 
But first, let me introduce a variation to standard three-point lighting by incorporating what's called a background light, which adds another layer to the three-dimensionality of your scene. A background light does just what the name implies. It lights the background. There are many different ways to light your background, anything from complex arrangements to using only a single lamp. For our purposes, we'll keep it simple and just use two background lights. Now, here are some tricks. By adding a gel to the light and slashing it across your background, you can create some pretty interesting visuals. You can enhance your background even further by adding elements to a light, like a gobo, or putting an object in front of a light to create distinct shadows as seen here. All of these tricks can be used to create that perfect shot in your next epic production. And although three-point lighting is certainly a time-proven and useful starting guide to properly light a scene, just keep in mind that there are many variations to this standard lighting arrangement. The key to establishing that specific mood you are trying to convey in a scene is through lots of experimentation and more importantly, your imagination. But just make sure of one thing when you're planning your next shoot. Don't overlook the importance of lighting. Well, that's all the time we have for this edition of TVC TV Tips and Tricks. If you're interested in learning more exciting techniques, be sure to sign up for our in-depth production classes by checking out our website at www.tvctv.org. TVC TV Tips and Tricks is a series that came about by watching a lot of internet training videos, specifically surrounding television and video production. A lot of the videos I saw I felt conveyed the message but truly weren't up to the production value I was looking for. I felt I could produce better quality videos. As a result, I jumped in head first and decided to produce some of my own videos for not only my students but the public in general. Three Point Lighting is actually the second in a series of videos that I will be producing to showcase what goes on behind the scenes in television production. For Three Point Lighting, initially I had to write the script. After writing a generic outline for the script, I sat down with Steve, my DP or Director of Photography, to review the script and make changes as needed. One of the first sequences we had to shoot was the 1920s flapper sequence. In order to shoot this correctly, we had to find the proper wardrobe to fit the period. Unfortunately, TVC TV doesn't have an extensive wardrobe department, so we had to contact the Broadway Rose Theater to find a proper flapper dress. In order to make sure that the dress looked authentic on screen and to make sure that our black and white sequence worked well, we decided to do a lot of screen tests with the flapper dress.
Once we were satisfied with all the screen tests, we then went into full-scale production. For my on-screen appearances, we applied a technique called chroma key or green screen. Here you can see how the effect is accomplished with and without the chroma keyed background. The production was shot over the course of several weeks, during which over four hours of total video was captured. All this effort was whittled down into an eight minute training video. As with most productions, there were problems. Lighting designers decided to place the on both the left and right, right front. The right, right, right. Well, I hope you've gained an understanding of what goes on behind the scenes in a television production. Thanks for joining me for a behind the scenes look at Three Point Lighting. Good. Yeah, that was too good. Yeah, yeah I'm getting so better right at this. Now you're just <laughs> if I know short. <laughs> I'm short, I'm not on screen too long. So now we're just being able to shoot the music.